Since there's no thing about biology, we all come from a mom, every last one of us. Moms are necessity for us to be breathing, right? Every mom has an impact, whether it be good or not so much. There's an impact. I reflected a lot this week about my mom and her influence on me, her faith influence. If you have been impacted by anything that I have said from this pulpit, yes, it comes from the Word of God, but I want to tell you it comes from my mom's influence, her faith influence on my life. Now, she may not be of right mind right now to understand that, but I, it's, it's amazing to me that her influence continues to live on. I look at folks, I look at saints here, I see Miss Charlene, and, and I see her grandkids that come in. Boy, it doesn't matter when, how long that they, that they visit. If they're here on a Sunday, they're here on a Sunday. Partly because of that faith influence of mom. We all have influenced and been influenced by moms. And even if it's not our own mom, we've been influenced by a mom. Well, Pastor, my mom hasn't been an influence on me. Well, has anything been an influence on you in this house? Even my mom has been an influence on you. You come to our potlucks, I guarantee you, you're going to get the influence of somebody's baked beans. That's a mom. Thank you, Miss Lisa. Love Miss Lisa's baked beans. They influence me. If you go to a, a, a men in fire, boy, you're going to be influenced by Miss Charlene and her baking abilities. You can't go to Miss Charlene's house without some kind of sugar. You're going to be influenced. 73.1 million children are influenced by American moms. And I want to look at the influence of a mom in the word. The original text is out of Exodus 2. Name's Jochebed. Jochebed lived in a time when it was illegal to have a, a male son. Male sons, as soon as they were found out, were told, they were told to be killed. The Pharaoh, was, at that time in Egypt, he, he was over all the Israelites, all the Hebrew people. They were slaves at that point. And they would, he would try to coerce the midwives. And if you, if you have a male son, throw it in the river because we're not killing these male sons off. You know, they're, they're living. They're slipping by us. Throw them in the river. They wouldn't do it. So having a child, much less a son in this time, was extremely dangerous. Well, that's back then. Well, I'm going to tell you, China has a, it's now a two-child edict. Chinese families can now have two kids. But China, before... Not long ago, it was a one child edict country. You were only allowed to have one kid. You think abortion rates are high here? Jochebed was mom to Moses. She hid him for three months. Her faith in the Lord kept him hidden. Boy, that's a, I don't know. I, I tried to reflect, I tried to put my, myself into, the, into Jochebed or even her, her husband's shoes. They're slaves. They have no rights. I see a lot of people talk about our rights are slipping away. There were no rights for them back then. I saw a pastor, I, I fully agree with it. He said that the moment that we as, as Christians in America lose all of our rights, the moment we're going to find out how really faithful we are to God. Ooh, maybe that's what the church needs. Strip my rights and see how quick I try to go behind the government's back to, to make sure we meet in person. I just can't imagine the, the turmoil <laughs> Jochebed and her husband went through to try to hide this child. Well, as the story goes, if you're not familiar, they take this child, they, they, they make a little basket, and they put pitch on it and make it waterproof, and they set it in the Nile. And the sister says, peels off to the side, and she watches this, this baby. And Pharaoh's daughter comes and picks him up and has, has empathy on this child and raises him as her own. And as faith would have it, chance would, you want, most people would say chance or just a coincidence, the Pharaoh's daughter decides, well, find a Hebrew woman so she can nurse him. And lo and behold, here comes Jochebed. That's how the faith of God works. <laughs> faith, a mother's faith. So we're going to look at it from the writer of Hebrews. If you don't have his word, I'm, I'm trust that you don't, it's going to be up on the screen here. Now let me, let's all stand for the reading of his words. We're going to be reading out of Hebrews 11. Many of us know this is the faith chapter. We're going to look at verses 23 to 28. 
Church say by faith. By faith. Ooh, that happens a lot here. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months, and after he was born, because he saw he was no ordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, church say it again. By Ooh. faith. Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He disregarded great disgrace for the sake of Christ as of a greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith, there it is again, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he, because he saw him who was invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the application of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. It's a reading of his word. Well, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it takes faith and faith alone. No actions that we do can, can stimulate any response from you. We act on faith and faith alone. Lord, we're gracious that you've called us to perform actions, but it's because of that faith that we do so. It's not the other way around. I'm thankful for the faith of Jochebed. I'm thankful for the faith of moms everywhere, continuing to pray for their kids. Lord, allow us to be transformed by your word. May our faith be the faith of a mother. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I'm looking in this, this scripture, and it continues to go on every, every new paragraph, by faith, by faith, by faith. A mother's influence is what we've titled, what I've titled today's message. And a mother's influence, as long as it's by faith. A mother's faith. See, faith is not just for moms. Gentlemen, yes, that doesn't give us up, let us off the hook. But boy, what a lesson we can learn by faith. Faith takes a choice, the first thing that faith does. It takes a choice. One of my favorite verses hanging up on one of my walls in the, in the parsonage is from Joshua. It says, now who, choose now who you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, that's a choice. It's a decision. We will serve the Lord. He, Joshua leading into that, he says, you, you decide whether you want to serve the Baals and the, the gods of your country. We don't have gods in this country. Yes, we do. We have self. Uh, before being before following faithfully as a pastor, I sold pharmaceuticals, mainly weight loss and anti-aging. I know that's kind of ironic looking at who you're looking at right now. But boy, the amount of money that people put into how they look and how they feel. Hormone re replacement therapy. Many may not know about that, but it's when a woman gets a little bit more advanced in age and she wants to feel a little bit younger advanced in age. So they change hormones, and they add hormones to bring her back to her peak. Men do the same thing with, with increased testosterone. We spend money on wanting to feel good, putting ourselves as the temple. And I wonder, thinking back now, if we invested that much time, energy, and money into our church and what the church does, imagine what we could do. I mean, there were millions of dollars that I sold by myself. It's a choice. See, we choose to make it about me. We choose to make it about ourselves. Faith. As with Joshua's perspective, it was all about our faith to choose who to follow. See, Mom had a choice. She had a choice to hide Moses. She could have followed the edict. She had a choice to say, no, I'm going to take a stand. I think in the coming days and very soon, society is going to give us a choice to make a stand. I've been making a stand, and that, those choices are going to cost me some relationships. And as much as I don't want it to cost me a relationship, especially within my own blood family, I can't really help but remember when Jesus said, no, my family's here. You are my brothers and my sisters and my mothers. I love my family, but when it comes down to it, I'm going to choose Jesus because it's a choice. Mom chose to say, I'm going to save my son no matter what society or what the law says. 
She didn't have any rights as a parent. As a, as a parent. She went against the law, and she went again. She went as a slave, someone with no voice. Friends, we have a voice. Why aren't we using it? I'm going to use my voice. I've told you this in the past. I've made some comments of uh, being bold. I'm going to be. I'm not going to be angry. I'm not going to be hateful. But if I can get passionate at my son's soccer game, and some of y'all got to see that this week. I, I appreciate that. On a side note, I appreciate those that came out to, to uh, support my son and his, his soccer endeavors. He, he won the first, they went through the first two rounds of the, and went to the, made it to the finals. They started out the season 0-2, by the way. And they, they, they suffered a loss on Saturday, but that's all right. I'm still passionate. But it doesn't mean I have to be hateful. I still shook, shook hands with parents from the other side. But we have a choice, and I'm going to use that choice to speak boldly, especially when it comes to my faith. I'm going to choose that choice to speak boldly. Why? Because an eternity is about to start for as many people that have no idea what they're walking into. Whether you take all my rights away, you take all my freedoms away, as for me and my house, we will still choose. Whether slave or free, I will still choose. But, but there's going to come a time when people choose... I'm going to go by the way because I want to make it easy on myself. Friends, eternity is a long time. We have a choice on our decisions to choose now <laughs> to define our eternity. Moses had a cho choice. He chose to identify as one of God's people. And the more and more I looked into this, I had a little bit of a problem because I remember teaching this in children's Bible quizzing. Moses fled because he killed a, he killed a, he killed an Egyptian and Everyone thought he was angry, but the writer of Hebrews says, oh, this is a different thing. I, I'm choosing to be and identify as a Hebrew, not as an Egyptian. He ran because he was rejected by the Hebrew people as well. They called him out. Our, our, what makes you think you're one of us? But he still chose to identify as one of God's people. He could have gone back into Pharaoh's household because he could have got away with it. He was one of Pharaoh's children. That's the way they saw him. Killing a person, you get away with it because you're royalty. You tell me that they don't get away with it? Look at it, all of our politicians and everything they get away with. Yeah. Come on. You think that a, 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 in the patriarchy of, of Pharaoh and in Egypt that he would, couldn't have gotten away with that? He could have taken the easy route home. No, I want to identify as one of God's peoples. His choice was to leave on faith. A couple reasons. His people weren't ready for his leadership. He wasn't ready to leave. On faith, he decided, oh, I, mean, I, gotta, I gotta do some more training. I thought back in my own faith walk and how my mom, and she would pray for me, and I've, I've made, this, made these comments before where she would send me those notes of Proverbs, my son, when I was deployed. She would pray for me when I didn't want to be prayed for. See, I, I may not have been cho choosing to follow Christ and his, his leadership in my life, or maybe I just wasn't ready for it. He was still training me. Maybe he wanted me to go through owning my own business to be able to fight for a little church in Southwest Indiana when they have some property damage. When everybody in town said, oh, you're not going to get that money back. Every little penny we did. Maybe in that moment of, I don't want to follow God, God's like, I'm still going to use this. See, we have a promise, and I can work through the good of all things for those who love me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that promise. Mm -hmm. I can really work through the good of all things. Even though Daryl loves me, but he doesn't really serve me. But boy, his mom over here is praying for him. His mom loves him deeply. So I'm going to work for the good for this, this, this mess over here that Daryl's making. I'm going to give him a little bit of experience to learn from. Moses, may, I may not have been ready to lead church, you know, 10 years ago. That didn't, God didn't give up on me. All on the faith of mom. Moses' faith was shared for the nation over the Passover details. He chose, man, I, you get a word from the Lord, right, we're going to have the angel of death. I don't know about y'all, but that sounds kind of scary. I'm going to send an angel of death over the, the city of Washington, Indiana, 
If you don't take a lamb and its blood, I don't know about y'all, but I, my wife faints at the sight of blood. I, I get a little sick. Can you imagine waiting our doors with, with blood? Can you imagine a poor sheep farmer that's lost a bunch of sheep in one night and one day? Everyone's scrambling to find a sheep. He made a choice to say, this is what we're, I know it sounds kind of weird, y'all, but I want you to stay dressed tonight. What? I can't go to sleep. I want you to get ready. Lace your sandals. <clears throat> Cook a meal. Sounds good. Kill a lamb and put the blood on the door. Huh? He made a choice to go ahead. No matter how crazy that sounds. Sometimes we're going to have to say some things that sounds crazy in the society's eyes. And we're going to have to make a choice to say, yes, I will stand up. Yes, I will be bold. District superintendent down in Kentucky has a blog, Time to Speak. Dr. Brian Powell is his name. Uh, I interviewed with him in the past. and Phenomenal man of God. But his, his blog is a time to speak. Now is the time to speak. We have to choose to speak out on our faith. Faith has action. Oh. We have action because of our faith. James says, show me your faith without action. I'll show you a faith that's dead. But I have faith, I have action because of my faith. Faith without action is it's dead, it's worthless, it's pointless. I, I remember doing a series in James when I first got here, up a few months after I got here, and that, that word just really encapsulated me. I, I just it helped me for at least a couple days, and I looked and I prayed on that word, and boy, there is nothing in it. There's not even a chance of life. Oh, I have all the faith in the world, but what are you doing with it? I go to church on Sundays. Awesome. What else? Faith without action. See, there was action in hiding that baby. Their action drove their passion for their child. They had to hide that child every single day. Anybody parents in here? You remember that first three months? Did everybody have a nice quiet three months? Oh, I did I remember my, my, my child, Ellie. <clears throat> first child, we had the first child center up every, every five seconds. Until my wife got back from, she got off of mater, maternity leave, or leave and, and she had to make a trip the very first week. She called me the next morning, how did the night go? I'm just waking up. You didn't wake up with the baby? Well, I'm a heavy sleeper. No, apparently she went back to sleep. So she had to sleep through the night very early. My boy, a different story. Apparently on July 25th was just something by chance with us. A lot of people scheduled their pregnancies for July 25th for some reason. That The hospital was packed. Everyone's looking and going and gone through the little window, looking at all the babies down in Florida. And, oh, there's one in the middle screaming. I'm thinking, oh no. Who's the screaming one? Yeah, who's the one in the screen? Who's that one in the blue screaming? Who's sellers? I don't know. That's my boy. Loud as can be. I could not imagine trying to hide Simon for three long months. Three long. Boy, that took action. Can you imagine doing something against society's norms for three long months? Lord, please help me do this. Lord, help me speak out on your word. Lord, I'm going to get chastised. My family's going to hate me, but help me stand strong in your word. Well, man, what happens if we just take away your freedoms? How about we take away your congregation? How about we take away people watching online? How we, Would you still do it? That's hard to answer. Isn't it? Would you stand on your faith? when the entire world turns their back on you. I'm not saying that's happened, but it's a very good possibility coming here very soon. Because if we were hungry for the Lord, there wouldn't be a chair in this town open in a church right now. Yeah, there's a couple churches that have multiple services, but we would all have to have three services in this town. Every church in the city would have to have three services for everyone to have a spot at the table. <clears throat> There's action in hiding that baby. There was action in leaving Egypt. 
He identified with God's people, and his action was to separate himself from the world that he was living within. Again, he could have chose to stay in the lap of luxury. And Moses said, nope, I'm going to go be homeless for a little while. He ended up being a shepherd. That was a far, a far cry from what he was in, in, in the palace of the emperor or the palace of Pharaoh. He, he had all the luxuries of the world. Can you imagine farming some sheep and going, oh, I could have been eating. What? Could have had attendants coming and serving my every need. There was action. But see, friends, if we're going to live a life in faith, we have to separate ourselves from society. There has to be a separation. We are to live in the world, not to be part of it. I gave an example a few weeks back of, of a whale and how most whales die because they suffocate. They drown. The whales drown. They live in the ocean, but they're not part of it. For them to continue life, they have to breach the ocean and take a breath of air. They have to leave their environment for something that sustains life. It's the ocean where they live that kills them. Friends, if we don't separate ourselves from society, it will kill us spiritually. God calls us to be set apart. Doesn't mean that we don't that we separate ourselves from everybody. For those of you that got to that came out and supported Simon in his soccer games, you saw, maybe you observed, I don't know whether you observed it with, with approval or not, but I was part of another community. There were families there and, 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 and people that are different. It didn't mean I, I separated myself from them. I went up and I shook their hands. I hugged some necks. But we are to separate ourselves from when it comes to our faith walk. I believe in, in supporting my church. I believe in what my church says biblically is true. And if someone asks me, you better believe I'm going to get loud. I told the soccer parents if they ever miss my loud voice, they know where to find me every Sunday morning at 10.30. Faith had the action of the put place in the blood on the door flames of the tents and the patience of waiting. Faith had the action of not opening the door when they heard the screams. Ooh, there's another one. <laughs> they, had to, they had to wait patiently, dressed, fully ready to go. Waiting on someone to say it's time. See, faith not leads to action of doing something, but sometimes it also leads to action of not doing something. We have to be attentive. They had to sit in those tents and in those in those huts, waiting for the angel of death to finish. I just can't imagine what it was like. I couldn't imagine what it was like to for. For the sister of Moses' sister to sit there and wait and want that child until she was picked up. Wait for the opportunity where she says, all right, the Spirit tells her, now it's time, go do this. Wait. Faith leads to action. Faith also leads to perseverance. Romans 5 says something about per how perseverance leads to hope. Perseverance. We need to steady the course. We don't hide when it gets when it gets hard. Friends, it's going to get hard. I wish, you know, during those, those hard times, it's usually when you see the, the church influx in huge numbers. September 11th was one of the highest church attending days the week of Sunday following. People flocked back to the churches. It was here too. 2001, you guys had an average attendance year round of 120 people. 120 people. That's four times what you are right now. We're about 30 in here today, right? Close, maybe a little less. Four to five times what you have in here right now. I got to do an overnight group with my brother John and I have to write a report over the last 25 years. It's got to be short. It's like, what can you tell me? Man, I remember parking up the streets, walking in. You think our parking lot's full now. 
This is big. Before they had, there was a house next door to it. Parking up the streets, walking in. There was no uh, complaints of handicap accessibility back then. They were packing this place out. 120 was the average that year. Maybe that pastor that I've just met recently has a point. Maybe, maybe if we lose our rights, the church will explode. That's what happened to China. Left a couple hundred thousand Christians in that, in that country, and the Iron Curtain went shut. Next thing you know, it's got four or five million Christians in that, in that country. It's still illegal to be a Christian in that country. Perseverance. You think the people in China know a little bit about some perseverance? Read a book um, that Doc made me read. Went out and bought it. That's one of those. There's stories of, of missionaries that, that went behind in areas that we're not supposed to be in. And China being one of those people. And I'm a, you want to know how they recruited their pastors for their church, home churches? How much time have you done in prison? You ain't done at least three years. We don't want to talk to you. See, prison back then is over there is like seminary here. They get the Bible and they, they write down the scriptures that they've memorized. Oh, I've got I've got Luke 3. Who's got 4? And, and they pass it around like contraband. <laughs> and they just study for three years straight. You get a little bit of extra time in jail, don't we? Don't we, brother? Get a little extra time on our hands. I've never been. I've never been to jail. I feel like a fraud. Usually they do. Perseverance. Jokebet had to have that perseverance for that three months. I'm sure it felt like years. Moses had to have perseverance to leave at forty and return at eighty. That's forty years. I often call my thirty years of wandering in the desert of my Moses years. It took me thirty years to say yes, Lord. Don't fire me. I'll follow you, wholly and full, one hundred percent. What was he doing during that 40 years? Oh, he's being taught. Perseverance. Perseverance was led by, is being led by what's not seen. Continually. I still, I don't have no idea where this step is. Well, that's what we call faith, Pastor. Yeah, but perseverance is continuing to take those steps, even though you have no idea where you're walking. Perseverance. I see God daily. Moses saw God daily. That's what the writer of Hebrews is telling us. He was walking with the perseverance of a God that only he could see. I don't know. I feel like Moses sometimes in, in the society that we have. There's so many people lost and broken. So many people thinking that God made a mistake when they created him as man or, or, or female, male or female. So many people that believe that I need to change my own sexuality because God made a mistake. There's so many people that are that are walking in a, in a way that is so lost that, well, I'll just take care of me, I'm number one. How's that working out for you? I don't know about y'all, but I'm a pretty big failure when it comes to only taking care of myself. Why? Because I gave up. I gave up when I hit the bottle. People give up when they hit their addiction. People give up when they say, no, I'm not going to go out today. I want to stay at home. I can't handle going out there. That's giving up, friends. We have to have perseverance continually taking those steps. Do you walk in faith because of what God has shown you or because God has told you and you still have no idea what's in front of you? Chronicles, 1 Chronicles 16 11 says to seek his face always. Seek his voice always. You want to want to know how you can walk in faith with perseverance? By always looking to him. Friends, it's harder to do that nowadays. There's a lot of noise out there. See, faith, it takes a choice. Faith takes action and faith takes perseverance. We must choose. We must choose to do something. And we must choose to continually do that something. As long as he leads. It was by faith. See, all of Moses' faith 
We can look back and in Exodus that it's estimated over 2 million Hebrew people were was led by Moses out of Egypt. All because mom said, I'm going to hold on to my baby. Friends, it started with mom's faith. It started with her influence. And I know the writers of Hebrews said his parents, but if you go back in Exodus, it was all about Jochebed. I'm going to tell you, if, if a woman's name is in the Old Testament, it means something. Not many wives are in, in the Old Testament. Jochebed didn't have a big part, but boy, was she there. And I look back, and it's all because of my mom's prayers. Have you been affected, or if anything that, the, that I preached out of this book has, has altered your way of living, it's because my mom had had the influence on me earlier in my life. My mom even prayed for that influence regardless if I was willing or not to listen. I wonder about Jochebed after her boy had left town. Where was she at? Did she continue praying for him? I like to think so. Because it took that endurance, it took the action, it took the faith to step out, to do what she did to preserve his life. His faith influenced millions and millions of others, continues to impact people today. I think I put billions. If not, I should have. Moses' faith continues to affect people now. Do you, you have a doubt in your mind that your faith doesn't affect people? Your influence? When I first got here, I used to use the term circle of influence. Moms, you have a circle of influence, and I'm sure that you have no idea how big that is. The influence. The influence that if it's based in faith, all oh, the, the, the damage that God can do for his wit, for his kingdom, it'll be awesome. The faith influence that you moms have. I'm going to ask the uh, musicians to come up. And I want us to take a moment today and call your mom. Say thank you. For the influence. And if you're in a position where you don't have a mom that has a good influence, then be a better influence. Where can you grow in your faith? Is your faith calling you to make a choice? Is your faith calling you to step out and do something? Is your faith calling you to hold on? We need to learn a little bit more. Maybe I want you to be patient. Or maybe your faith is telling you it's time to continue to keep on keeping on. But you need to hold out. Paul said, I've finished the race. That long lasting race. I didn't stop. I think of an old mentor that after his wife had passed, he was in the hospital. And I said, Pastor Ken, how are you doing? Oh, I'm waiting. Every orderly that comes through is going to hear about Jesus. Uh, change the shifts about an hour and a half. I'm going to have some new people coming in. Death is sitting at my door right now. But not until he crosses that that theme. I'm going to continue telling people about Jesus. Endurance. What is God calling you to do today? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the fact that our mothers have influence. And Lord, I personally thank you for the influence of my mom and in the faith walk that I have today. I thank you that regardless if she is affecting people right now, her influence on me is still affecting folks. I would pray that, you, that you're still doing that through her. Lord, I, I'm praying for the, that person today that doesn't know if their faith wants to take a, a, a leap of faith, a, that step of action. Maybe that faith is calling for them to make a decision. Maybe that faith is calling for them to, to continue doing, continue walking in the direction that they're walking, continue Champ championing in a way that they that you want them to champion. Father, we just I want you to talk to us today. May we choose to do what you want us to do as long as you need us to do it. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Friends know I love you and I'm praying for you. Why don't we stand and worship one last time?